Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for a new video. So today I'm going to be using the microfreak and we're going to create five batch from scratch. So I will show you the process really from zero from the init preset. Uh, this preset are uh, five of my presets or I mean they're going to look like five of the presets that are in my uh, microfreak techno bank and this preset will be available for free. So today I'm going to be covering kind of a sequence techno baseline. So this time I'm gonna go a bit more in depth with the sequencer and the arpeggiator. We're gonna create a kind of shuffle hats rhythmic pattern using the arpeggiator and the rising and the fall from the cycling envelope as well as the LFO. And we're gonna also create a kind of classic super soul trancy, very nice uh, scent lead. Another kind of lead key, a little bit, a bit more industrial. And finally, we're gonna get kind of lead detune kind of sequence sound as well. All right, let's start with the first. So here I have my init, so you can hear there is a bit of reverb, as usual I like to add always a little bit of reverb, it's always easier to know where you want to bring your sound. And it's a bass line, so let's, let's go a bit more down. Uh, in terms of oscillator, it doesn't really matter, I will use the basic wave. bring everything down so like this it's easy to follow you can always anyway go back and modify obviously if you want to especially make your own so baseline so i have my low pass filter we bring the filter down i want something a little bit plucky but not too plucky so i have my set by default 100 percent i'm gonna bring down to 60 percent more or less sharp attack sharp decay around 1.6 second and then i'm gonna start to apply A bit of filter envelope maybe bring down the filter all right now that is a great base to start we're gonna focus now on the sequence and we're gonna come back to the sound itself a bit later one thing i like to do is use the arpeggiator to kind of create a sequence so in the arpeggiator you have a diff different mode you have up order random or pattern uh, i personally like to use up or order and just like pressing not so for example if you go zero zero plus one already you can have something nice but then i will go plus nine so three four five six seven eight nine and eight so now it's playing up i don't want this i want playing in order so one two nine eight Alright, and once I like this, you have this ALT button here, so I can press leave ALT and if you... Alright, so now you have your bass line, if you play with the rest of the track... Get something nice and groovy already. Groove is just a 9 9 rhythm, but that's a good starting point, basically. And the thing is, now you can transform basically your arpeggiator into a sequence. This way, you can transpose it. So, the easiest way to do that, I'm gonna bring back here and you press Shift, and then after you can select A or B, which if you prefer to put your sequence in the stock A or in the sequence B. So, I'm gonna put A, and now you can see it's turned blue, so now it's in sequence mode. This way, if I remove this play pattern and I can play So now you can still obviously edit your sequence. If you play to uh, re record here, you enter in the step recording mode and you can see here you have step one is F sharp, but you can switch here and you can obviously change you you just need to select the one you want and press the note you want i'm not gonna destroy my sequence but that's the idea and you can even go in uh utility oh wait let me remove this you can go in utility preset and you can go to sequence length and you can shorten the sequence if you want something 
different, let's say, five step. And that's going to be a solution as well. So one thing you can do is add a bit of swing. So if you press shift and turn the right knob, you can add a bit of swing, just a little probably. And after it's a little bit too much, but one cool thing with the sequencer is you have as well spice and ties. And so basically what it does, you have spice and you select gonna kind of play randomly you know so I always being subtle because after it's a bit too much but then you can press dice and it will kind of have different variation That's pretty cool as well, especially when you play live, you can easily add variation to your bass sequence, even if it's a basic bass sequence, you can easily add variation. So you can as well add a bit of glide, you have this, this slight pitch modulation around 60 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds. Let's say 30 milliseconds. All right, now it's pretty steady, and there is different way to uh, make this a bit more interesting. First, you can slightly modulate your filter. So like this, you basically don't have to do it manually. I like to use the cyclic envelope for that. So I'm gonna select my cycling envelope and go to the cutoff, and I'm gonna make an amount around, let's say, 20 maybe. And I'm gonna leave it in run and I'm gonna, for example, bring the rise around two seconds and bring the fall around four seconds. And I'm gonna leave the all down at zero. This way it's open faster than it close. And it's it's nice way to have something different than the LFO and you can as well change the shape basically of uh, you you see you can change the shape of your rays and so maybe it's this one like this and this one like this and then after you can still if you find the modulation is too much you can still make it a little bit more subtle bring it maybe a bit resonance and after you can still obviously modulate your cutoff live and another thing to make it less boring is to apply a kind of uh, sample and hold modulation on your filter to kind of make it jump and by small step so you go to your LFO you select uh, random here uh, because of the sequence is like a 16 note so we're gonna go to 16 and then we're gonna start to apply our LFO to the cutoff as well. And here again it's gonna be very slight, like maximum 4-5 I would say. So now you have this, you can play with the One thing you can do, you can modulate as well uh, the resonance. So either with the LFO or with the cycling envelope, but at a different value. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna assign. So you click to uh, assign here and you can select resonance. So this way assign one now is resonance and I'm gonna apply something very subtle. And I'm gonna apply as well a bit of randomness, why not? But maybe negatively this way. Now you have your waves, you have your patch always evolving. 
So other way to modulate your patch, if for example you don't really like, for example, I show you, but I don't really like too much the rising envelope on the LFO moving too much. I prefer rather to do it manually. Uh, what you can do is, for example, use the rising envelope to modify the pitch or the wave uh, timbre to kind of add kind of FM modulation. You know, if you have a very fast cycling envelope, if you haven't checked my video where I give 30 freaky tips on the outro microfic, I explained that. So I, I recommend you to go to check out and you can do this to even make you bass uh, more interesting. And I'm just going to save this one here because I like as well this patch. But yeah. That was the first patch. Now let's jump into the second. So next one is what I like to call shuffle light. This one is I started a little bit with my last video. Uh, let's take noise. And you wanna bring type around 57. I wanna kind of create a 16 hertz, but that can be evolving and using the cycling envelope and the LFO to kind of make it always interesting, always moving and got a bit more stuff as well I wanna show you. All right, when you bring Timbergram 50, you got this nice kind of ride sound. And balance ground zero because I don't want this uh, oscillator, you know, shape is bringing this, this oscillator sound, this sine wave triangle, I don't want. I want something like this. Obviously, I want something very sharp, no sustain. And the idea is playing a 16 hertz pattern, so you bring the up, you right click to make it sync and then you go to 16 this way all right cool and now the idea is to have a pattern like this so it's like creating your own rhythmic hats pattern with the micro freak you can as well apply low pass filter and then you can't give it the other color even you can play with the resonance I would rather not use it but yeah that's one thing you can do so here again you can apply maybe a bit of swing if you want to have a like U60 not shifting that can be a great idea and so now you want to modulate this decay uh, knob obviously so you can either do it with the lfo or the cycling envelope for this time we're going to use the cycling envelope and first you need to assign your decay to one of the assign button because it's not by default so we're going to choose assign one for example so you click on the button and you just turn the knob and it's already straight away assigned this way you can go to your cycling envelope and go to assign one and let's say we want 30% let's say. So now if I bring this at zero, you can see it's kind of jumping really. So you want the cycling envelope in run, bring right at zero, bring all at zero, and then So now you can see it's like opening and closing. You can obviously do the other way, bring the TK up, but here having a negative modulation. That's really up to you, you can experiment with that. I'm gonna go back positively. And alright, 30%. All right, but now if you want to bring things to the next level, you can think about, okay, this one is modulating basically the GK like this way. But what about if I was modulating this one? So basically here it's fixed, but by being fixed in making this knob doing like this. But what about if I start to make this one moving like this? It will also make this one moving weirdly. And that's where things start to be interesting. So I'm going to... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the LFO to uh, modulate the fold. So here again, you don't have the fold by default, so you can click on assign and move this one. And then you go to your LFO and assign to, and you click. And let's say you want something 50%. So now you have your LFO modif 
modulating the fall which is modulating the decay so already you can hear some kind of interesting pattern but then after it's obviously you can start to move then after it's all about finding the sweet spot and you can play with the rate That's pretty cool. And you can maybe change with the But you can even go even further and crazier because now what you can do it's basically using the cycling envelope to modulate the speed of the LFO and you kind of, kind of create a kind of weird cycle because you have the cycling envelope, the, the fall time is controlled by the LFO which is making this one move so the cycling envelope output is always uh, changing and it depends on the LFO but what about the output, you bring it back into the rate of the LFO so let's see how it's signed so here again you have to assign uh, you LFO here, so you just up, choose division here. So now on assign three, you have your LFO rate, and you want obviously your cycling envelope to modulate the rate. Oh, sorry, of the LFO. That's interesting. Then after it's just like you have to experiment and tweak, but. That's an interesting pattern, maybe you can... And then after you can tweak everything and it, you will get kind of different patterns. So after it's better to maybe have, have a bit of groove, so that's what I'm gonna do. Add the kick, add a bit of rumble. Maybe if I add a bit of delay. That's an interesting way to make creative hats and an interesting way to use uh, this idea to modulate the LFO with the cycling envelope but uh, LFO is modulating the fall as well so you can even go further and and maybe try to take another kind of sand and maybe use the start to modulate the pitch, the timber, and so now you can get this kind of weird evolving sequence as well. And yeah, you can go on and go on and easily get lost, which is fantastic. All right, now let's maybe do some more classic pattern. I want to do like a super so powerful and kind of simple part, but go to octave down. Something 
something like this so you need to select the sawtooth they tune around 67 and the shape around 50 as well all right that sounds pretty much okay we can shape the attack maybe this depends if you want something a bit more like crazy around 60 millisecond sustain i will recommend 100 percent and decay yeah doesn't really matter much but and then after you can apply a bit of filter to have just a bit of pluckiness of modulation when you press the knot so i'm gonna bring down the attack for that you see this way you have the you have this fast uh, filter modulation at the beginning which is kind of kind of cool again okay. a bit more volume all right one thing is i like to do is i already show it in the previous video but it's to use the lfo to modify the timber and you can go and go around 60 percent maybe a bit more Sixty-five sounds good, and you want to use so the triangle and unsync the LFO and go around one hundred. So let me without, and when I bring back, it's kind of making it more exciting. So then you can add again a bit of glide because because of you play two notes you can add a bit of glide again around 30 milliseconds you have something subtle and you can go around 60 milliseconds maybe and then after you can maybe modulate uh, your filter a little bit with the cycling envelope to make it a bit move a little bit because it's pretty pretty steady now so you're gonna go to your cutoff cycling envelope and let's modulate around 40 percent so obviously you don't want something like this right now you want something maybe who open like for one second like this and then stay here a little bit maybe and maybe something which is taking a bit longer to go back to normal so let's say three seconds So yeah, pretty simple patch, but pretty effective. Let's move into the next one. Maybe something a bit more industrial this time. So let's go to harmonic, bring everything down. So this is technique I've shown as well in the other video. It's basically using the cycling envelope to have modulating the pitch to kind of get of, of uh, FM modulation. So you can go minus 26, for example. Obviously, you want to change this, bring the raise at zero, bring the auto send down at zero, and then you can play with the fall to get this kind of nice metallic sound. So then after, it's up to you if you want. You can really experiment and you can play with the attack as well. Uh, that's really up to you. So obviously I want something a bit more percussive. Attack at zero. Sustain. Uh, you can bring it halfway. Like this is not like... It's still 
keep this percussive element and I will recommend to use maybe a band pass for this one and you want a bit of uh, filter modulation but yeah not too much because after you lose because of this the pan pass if you make a too uh, big modulation it's kind of sounds weird so yeah then after you can add a bit of resonance and one thing is because the lower notes you want kind of your band pass filter to move according to from where you play on your keyboard like this is like picking exactly the uh, the, the right uh, frequency range according to the right note you know like higher notes or you want to pick up higher frequency range on your with your filter so you can use the key up and to kind of track the the cutoff so this way when you bring here and you bring like 50 percent let's say up when you're gonna play down it's kind of following the keyboard rather than if I haven't done that you know it, it the, the band pass filter will stay exactly at the same range so it might work for a certain range but if you play too high or too low it might be like doesn't sound good so yeah that's a really good trick to make you band pass filter follow your uh, keyboard so one thing you can do as well you can use your envelope to modify the wave let's say so you see it add a little extra punch and it really add this nice attack but then again you can apply this envelope to uh, your pitch as well this is after it's ready if you have want to have this nice detune effect at the beginning i'm gonna remove it it's, too, it's not what i'm especially looking for for this patch but that's the thing you can do and maybe you can mod modulate your LFO like to don't be always the same when press the note you can make it slightly move a little bit why not so use your cutoff maybe like 15 yeah let's say 15 13 percent and you want something like and you can hear it slightly Like this, this way you can play always one note and you always get the impression is evolving again you can use the LFO to modulate the pitch the timber the shape whatever you like and have but that's gonna be pretty cool all right that was the second patch uh, the, the second patch that was the fourth part so this is kind of my classic way to uh, go to for industrial percussive metallic noisy kind of stuff that's the way i like to do and it's the easiest way after all, like i said you have so many possibility by using the cycling envelope the lfo to modulate your filter or the pitch or the wave uh, anything so yeah let's jump into the last preset so for the last preset is kind of a classic detune key sound but it's something it's a good way a good starting point to have a nice sounding key to your track and then after i will sh i will make a quick sequence and and we're gonna look into the step sequencer like this how you can sequence something so i'm gonna use the virtual analog i really like this oscillator even like some most of the time for the super so sound i will use this one because uh I found the super so sound sounding a little bit too noisy sometimes and if I use this one you can you can detune so you can have kind of super so according to how you set but yeah this I like this oscillator with the detune because you can really get nice things Even, especially when you start to go up like this remember this one is slightly detuned so I'm just gonna bring the attack zero bring the sustain and already you got something which sounds great to be honest huh? after you just have to kind of find the right melody and bring down the low pass filter add a bit of filter envelope 
I mean, for me it sounds pretty good already after. You just have to find a way to maybe uh, give it a bit of more character. So like I said in my previous video, you can add a fast LFO on the pitch uh, on one of the oscillator uh, modulation. So for example, you can go and apply this sharp envelope on the timber, so maybe negatively. It was like this. It adds a little something, and you can go with the shape as well, so which is assigned to assign one by default. And you can just enter thing. Maybe bring a bit. Too much, but something. And that, if I maybe a bit higher, and yeah, I already got my sound. Uh, as I said, you can obviously apply. Uh, LFO on the pitch to get this kind of vibrato effect maybe that's one thing you can do you just you can hear it already I'm gonna use the triangle uh, I'm gonna oh no that's not what I wanted to do is and sing Here it sounds a bit too... Actually this is too fast, it's the sound. Let's say 8 Hz. And sounds okay. Yeah, that's... Right, and then one thing that I didn't show you with the step sequencer, so you can press uh, shift sequence and now you have the sequencer on and you can, when it's on play and you press record, it's like real time recording, this I'm um, absolutely a shit at that, so I'm not gonna show you, but I'm gonna remove the play and if you press on the record here, you can see you have step one and now you can just press the note uh, you want. So, for example, and if you want a space on this one, if I don't, you press here and it's jumping to the step four, so you don't have not here and another space and space. All right, and let's say I have enough, but I'm gonna. Okay, so now it probably sounds pretty bad. And you can still like go there and you can edit, choose the step you want. Never this one, maybe more like this. And And you can as well, like I said, shorten the length of your sequence. Uh, oh, sequence length, and you can have some. It would have been great to choose the starting point and the uh, ending point, but.
that's another way to have like kind of plucky sound and having a nice quickly sequence. But obviously I've been a bit lucky maybe with the sequence, but you can quickly find uh, interesting sequence and and you notice I'm probably a big fan of uh, hardware synthesizer with integrated sequencer and I just love it. It's just so much easier and fun to sequence and have something something good out of it. So, all right, guys, I hope you liked the video. The preset will be available for free. I will put the link in the description as usual. Uh, if you want to support me, you can grab my techno bank as well, where you have 90 uh, preset and you can kind of have different vibes and this kind of kind of weird stuff. I will put the link in the description. You can have a listen and and see by yourself if you like or not. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.